Hello, this video is brought to you by my supporters over on Patreon. Minasan, arigato gozaimasu. My name is Kurt, and this is my daily good life meditation, an exercise that I do every morning, a little bit after waking up. It's now 4.37 a.m. I do this to remember my life objectives and principles, those which are outlined in my book, Going Alone. And you can get your own copy up here at this link. And if you don't see a link, there's one down in the description. I also use this time to reflect on the last 24 hours, how I did with the uh, challenges and opportunities that I met. I uh, think about the coming day, plan for the uh, um, things I'm going to do, and ready myself for the unexpected. And then I conclude by preparing for death. But I start all of that with a poem. We're back with Keats today. And I've got an interesting one. Poems of this period uh, had a lot of reference sometimes to old knights and fairies, etc. And so this is one, and even a lake. And this is one just like that. It's called La Belle Dame Sans Merci, a ballad. And the title there in French basically means A Beautiful Lady Without Mercy. It's the story of a, a knight who is uh, charmed by um, a fairy beautiful fairy who takes him back to her lair back to where she lives and and makes him sleep and so long that when he wakes up he realizes it's all a dream and uh, realizes that he's alone in fact there's only really one word here that I you probably you may know but um, uh, I kind of knew but I had to look it up just to make sure it's sedge I thought that was a second word oh yeah there's two words actually sedge and sedge is the reason I say that you might know it is that you might be familiar, as I kind of was, that it means um, a, kind of like a wetland grass, you know, grass along the side of a river or stream, a sedge. But I didn't, what I didn't realize, and I'm glad I looked it up, was that it has a poetic sense of referring to kind of a woodland. So if you hear sedge used in classical poetry, the, the poet is trying to evoke a sense of, uh, of a nature and woodland through that, through that one, the vehicle of that one word. Another word here that I had to look up that I had, I'd really kind of made me think that it was spelt wrong. It was gloam, G-L-O-A-M. I thought, because the context is, I thought they meant that the poet Keats meant gloom. It no, it's gloam. Um, and, um, and it, is again a poetic word suggesting twilight so gloom makes sense right gloom but gloom so think about it in a more poetic sense you know just kind of has that role to it here we go otherwise i don't think i need to define anything else the rest all makes sense St strangely enough and normally with keats stuff i have to define like 10 percent of the words but here we go La belle dame, forgive my friends, La belle dame sans merci, a ballad. Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, alone and palely loitering? The sedge has withered from the lake, and no birds sing. Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, so haggard and so woebegone? The squirrel's granary is full and the harvest is done. I see a lily on thy brow, with anguish, moist, and fever dew, and on thy cheeks a fading rose, fast withereth too. I met a lady in the meads, this is the night speaking now, right? I met a lady in the meads, full beautiful, a fairy's child, her hair was long, her foot was light, and her eyes were wild. Keats often refers to beautiful women as having a being light of foot. I made a garland for her, and bracelets too, and fragrant zone. She looked at me, and she did love, and sweet, and made sweet moan. He often gets a little racy. I set her on my pacing steed. I can just picture the horse pacing, right? And I set her, lifted her light self up, so, you know. After the moaning, I set her on my pacing steed, and nothing else saw all day, for sidelong 
Would she bend and sing a fairy song? She found me roots of relish sweet and honey wild and manna dew. And sure in language strange, she said, I love thee true. She took me to her elfin spot, and there she wept and sighed full sore, and there I shut her wild, wild eyes with kisses for. And there she lulled me asleep, and there I dreamed, ah, woe betide, the latest dream I ever dreamt on the cold hillside. I saw pale kings and princes too, pale warriors, death pale were they all, they cried, La belle dame sans mercy, thee hath in thrall. So I guess he wasn't the first. I saw their starved lips in the gloam, with horrid warring gaped wide, and I awoke and found me there on the cold hillside. And this is why I sojourn there, here, <laughs> alone and palely loitering, Though the sedge is withered from the lake, and no birds sing. Now we know why the night loiters in the late fall, late autumn, early winter. The lady of the lake, so to speak. That one kind of... <laughs> I like it. You know, poetry is a great way to dis to control the mind. Um, when the mind starts thinking thoughts on its own and going strange loitering places of its own, you know, its own internal gossip, as mine is wont to do, you know, thinking of thinking, just worrying, for example, over work. I keep poetry close by and just open the book and read it. And it takes me uh, to a better place. Good, good uh, distraction for the mind. Okay, let's do this. The uh, good life for today. Um, first, the last 24 hours in yesterday. I haven't talked about my night's sleep for a long time, largely because there's no need to anymore. I sleep well. I'm sleeping from the time I set my head on the pillow, for, which is between 8.30 and 9, 8, 9 p.m. until the alarm goes off at 4 a.m. Invariably, the alarm goes off. The only time I ever get up anymore is when the uh, nature calls, um, and that's not often. Um, what a change over just a couple of, just a year ago, even, boy, a couple of years ago when I was having the, uh, uh, the panic attacks in the middle of the night and couldn't hyperventilating. And good God. I was in a meeting, was it Monday? Yeah. I was in a meeting... And I was the lowest ranking person in the meeting. Um, and the big boss and the bigger boss was there too. And the big boss was telling the middle bosses, you know, you're all managers. You're going to get, you're going to, you're going to do what it takes to get the thing done. If it means working, you know, long hours over the weekend, whatever you're going to, we're going to he said it more than like a we're going to do it, but it was, it was really worth it. more you're going to do it. And I, the, the thought in my mind was, and it wasn't, he wasn't directing that at me. He was direct. I, I explained to them that in order to, to understand the level of effort for the thing that we need to do, I need to know the, I need to know what needs to be done. I need to, I need documentation of what the, what, what the goal is and what that constitutes. And, and estimates from the leads about what how much time that would take. I'm I'm not the person to provide that. I'm not the subject matter expert. Don't shoot me. I'm just the project manager. I won't go on and on because I'm trespassing now a little bit too close to work. But that was that harkened me back to when that was me. And I don't want that to be me. And it's not going to be. I'm done with all that. This is, man, never, ever, ever, I don't care. Mm. I feel a little passing. I've got to, I feel like I want to throw up in my mouth. That's actually what I want to feel like. It's like, what a mistake that was when I tried to, 
when I tried to advance my career. I mean, there's a, there's a level, there's a level point where you can have a comfortable life, and then there's beyond that. It's like that's just that's just. I mean, you're doing it for the. I don't know why people do it. I had another conversation yesterday with someone about something else. I won't go into any details because I don't know, but it really revealed to me how different standards exist for what constitutes a peaceful, good life. So let's pull back from that, Kurt. I'm talking too much about work. Um, yesterday was a good day in terms of I laid out my goals for the morning, my, my work goals, and checked them off. Bam, 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 bam. As I think I mentioned uh, last week, I, I have a process now where I, I have a checklist. I've talked about this before, and I have the two sides of every day's checklist, the things I have to do for myself and the things that I have to do for um, work. On work days, it's, it's almost all work, and then the self, I can do stuff during my breaks and during lunch or after work if I have time, um, if I have energy. And then I put a little mountain next to the one that's called the mountain for the day. That's the one. If I finish that one, I'm gonna. I earn feeling good for the rest of the day. And I did it yesterday. I did it. I did the mountain too, and it came out really well. And I felt good for the rest of the day. And I'm gonna kick the day off with two mountains this morning. Although only one of them is the mountain. It gets to be only one thing gets to be the mountain. If I can finish that one, it'll be that. Um, but I've got an ambitious week ahead. I got a lot of stuff to do, and I'm rolling at it. Ambitious month. I set a big goal for myself by the end of the month, and the team. Thus that conversation on the Monday, we shall do this thing, say it's the big boss. Um, so it was a good day. Went to the beach, swam. I got scared. Dude, I got scared by a balloon. I was, it was windy, and I was out swimming. And I could see in the waves, I was all alone, and I could see in the waves a funny mylar balloon making slow pacing way through the waves at me. I don't know how white what white water would come through, but it wouldn't wash it to shore. Somehow it survived and it was coming closer and closer to me. And I was like, what the hell? What's it down there? I thought I didn't couldn't tell it was a balloon. It looked like it was some sort of like a float. I couldn't tell what it was. And then I made my way closer to the beach. I was like, because I, like, I was afraid of like, like a crab pot or something like that. So I mean, tossed around the wind. I didn't want to get tangled in its rope or something like that. I'm all alone. There's no lifeguards, you know. I'm out there swimming around. So I was like, I'm getting close to the shore. I got in close to the shore. I got close. And it just disappeared. Later, I discovered what it was. It was a mylar balloon with a heavy weight on it. But it was a fancy mylar balloon. Really strange looking thing because I found it up on the beach. And the weight was kind of causing it to drag through the water, totally harmless. It was just my mind playing tricks on me, but scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Got me out of the water, and I didn't go back in. I didn't like that. I don't know. I get scared of things down there amongst my feet sometimes. So I didn't get as much exercise yesterday as I'd like, and I didn't get it, and I didn't swim. It's very rare that I miss a swim at all. I didn't swim at all the day before because I had a Monday. I had been at the office, and I didn't get home in time. So I don't feel I don't, I don't feel quite as firm and vigor as usual. It's nothing like a, a good ocean swim to uh, really make me feel good. Even even just a dip, I don't even have to swim very much. Just jump in the water as I typically do during the winter. Just ah, whoa, out. See how how I do this winter. Good day yesterday. Good solid day of work. And I during my breaks, I, I move forward with some of the personal stuff I was working on. I I can be very proud of yesterday. Very very proud. Oh, and the unique one, I realized that she has like six, seven months left. Holy crap, she's going to be gone. She's going to be gone before we know it. I told her yesterday, I said, it's time for you to, she's, she's kind of a, um, a leader where she works. She's a senior administrator now. I told her, I said, and she's got some subordinate, subordinates that like are not quite pulling their weight. Uh, they're not, they don't, they're not rising to the responsibility. I told her, it's time for you to tell your subordinates, guys, I'm going to be gone in six months. You need to figure this stuff out so you can do it on your own. What a good feeling that is. Huh? <laughs> she won't do it, though, because she's just... She, maybe it's because she's Japanese, but she just... Like, I can't... I, I, I'm bad at work. I Every opportunity I get to drop the fact that I'm leaving, I do. I, it's, I'm, it's rather shameless. I do it for myself because it 
it makes me, f- it's like, it's like telling me Christmas is coming. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we got to work, work hard on this thing. It's going to take about that much time. By the way, Christmas is coming. <laughs> and I don't do it. I mean, look like I did it yesterday. Okay. But I don't do it in a gratuitous manner. I do it when it's a, it's a fortuitous opportunity. Like yesterday, I was having a meeting with a customer, and they, they were like, they were like, well, Kurt, how long can we have you on this project? Uh, and I said, well, I'm, 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 I'm leaving, I'm quitting, I'm stopping work on December sixteenth, two thousand twenty-four. I said twenty-four, right? So because I, sometimes when I say December sixteenth, people think it's two months from now. <laughs> so they said it's, it's, it's a long time. That was an example of me dropping the fact. But not like, I'm not like standing up and saying, okay, I'm leaving. And it's not like that. It's like, how long can we have you for this project? Well, I said, not up to me to decide, but I'm leaving on December 16th. And then the big bosses, the customers in there and says, so then we're going to push to have you till December 15th. <laughs> That's okay with me. Please do. Yeah. I'm really enjoying my new project. I'm enjoying the new team. They're sending me out in the field. I'm learning stuff. I'm, I love that. I, I love that kind of stuff. I would, I really hope that this is my last project. Because um, um, this would be a good one to go out on. Well, I'm talking way too much about work this morning. Good day yesterday. Let's do the good life meditation. Um, the creed, that is. Uh, which consists of eight objectives and 35 principles. As follows. The eight objectives that I'm seeking to achieve in my life. Before I do that, let me just introduce a thought that I had earlier um, this morning that I think is significant for me in terms of being able to... Uh, um, I've, I've often I've been trying to think about images because some way to capture a, a theme or an idea about how life is relative to the horror show and the fact that life doesn't go well, which are two of my principles. The well, horror show speaks to the fact that sometimes things are just horrible. I mean, you get a stage four diagnosis of cancer and you're gone, right? horrible car accident, whatever the case may be. Woman down the two next door, my next door neighbor, her her friend burned to death. Um, about, that was about four months ago. She's, her dog lives with her now. Caught herself on fire alone at home and didn't kill her. She went to the hospital. Well, she was able to call 911 and I took her to the hospital and uh, she was there and conscious long enough for the doctor to tell her you're likely to die, and she did die that night. I mean, that's what I mean. Just absolute horror, and there's more horror going on. Bob, the one next door, to to, to I got Renee, and then I got Bob. Renee is the the one that her friend burned to death, and then Bob next door is. I won't even go into that. I mean, I talk to him every day. He walks past this window. I keep the shutters up in the window, and we talk and. <sighs> I mean, the things that are going on inside is just utter horror. I can't even bring it. I mean, I'm speechless. I was going to help him this week because, um, and I always tell him, I'm here, let me know, I'll help you, whatever you need. And I'm here to help Bob uh, and his wife. And um, it's his wife that's got the horror. But it's a horror for Bob as well as a result. So anyway, I'm going to be here next week to help because we got to move the wife, and we're going to I'm going to help them to do that. Anyway, I needed something, some vehicle to some something to help capture this fact. You know, I'm, I'm often readying myself for death every single day, right? And it's in earnest. I'm not doing that as some plaything. I'm doing it in earnest to ready myself. I mean, it's the, I know the horror is coming for me. It might be fast like it came for my dad when he got his heart attack and was out and out in seconds and gone for good or it could be um, you know incredibly painful you know overnight death like Renee's friend or it could be what's going on in Bob's house it's going on forever first I the image that I had was people hanging from like a ra- rafter it's like imagine a lattice up there and people hanging and dangling over a black pit and losing their grip and letting go and falling. But I don't like that because people are dropping off, you know, into the oblivion, into the abyss, into the oblivion is the thing. It wasn't random enough. Then I came up with one this morning. Um, 
we're due to my beach. I spend, I spend time at the beach now. It's like we're like people standing in the, in the foamy waves, right? And it's kind of a steep-sided beach with waves tossing up and down, tossing up in a rough sea. We're standing there. And the waves kind of unsettle us a little bit. We're standing there, right? We can't go anywhere. Maybe there's a cliff behind us. We can't go up any higher. Every once in a while, a big wave, a rogue wave perhaps, comes up and just sweeps you right off the beach and into the sea. You know what? I guess that's kind of the case because one of my... I can apply this to the anchor hold. I've, I, I've already got it now. I just realized it. I've already got this all in place. I did, I've had it in place all along. I've even got a friggin' image for it. Um, the anchor hold um, is, is the... Here it is right here. That I even got Emily to make a, an image for. The anchor hold is one of my principles. I think principle number three or four. And it suggests that we're standing on a, on a rock in the middle of sticking out of a sea and the waves come and the wind blows and the rain comes down and every now and then a wave sweeps us away. And they even got Emily to make an image of it. There it is. See all these people? This is on the opening for the, poet, for the chapter titled Stoic Poetry. You can see the people, the one guy sitting Zen-like, kind of like the Buddha on, a, on his rock with the waves crashing. The other person in the way in the back there is wailing at the heavens. Why? And the man, a uh, second from the back, is about to be swept off by a great wave. So I've already got the damn thing. <laughs> I forgot that I had that, but putting it on the beach works too. Anyway, I'm 21 minutes in. I gotta get. I gotta finish this up because I have work to, to get ready for. I've got a busy day. Let's come swing around and do my uh, eight objectives. These are, and by the way, you can find all eight of the objectives in all 35 of the principles of my Bhattra Relate right here in my book, Going Alone in the chapter titled, The Good Life, which is a nod to the Stoics. Objective one, to be always ready to die, to make good and effective use of time, to develop and maintain good and sound life principles, pardon me, to cultivate good emotional reactions, to perform good actions, to recognize true limits and true opportunity, to do just one thing at a time and do that thing slowly and deliberately and carefully. And then number eight is to keep my balance. Maybe, maybe trying to keep my balance upon the rock, which is the place of the anchor hold. Let's do the 35 and see how I can do in terms of catching the numbers. You can see that's the last effort that I did to have all 35 there. Let's see, let's make another one. Umkai. I wrote that in Japanese. It means the uh, beautiful clouds up in the mountains. Bunkai, nice Japanese word. Here we go. And listen for the anchor hold. I think it's around three or four. Drum beat. War, reason, homunculus. Anchor hold, four. Home of good and evil. Purpose, atomic principle. Nature. Pirate ride, maturity, social principle, principle of family, public speaking, temperance. I feel like I've gone astray. Life will not go well. The home of the horror show. The home of good and evil. My mind's not quite with it. Home of good and evil. After that comes Ooh, I lost it. Wow. Temperance. Life will not go well. The horror show. The home of good and evil. Distraction, maybe? Agency and the great indifference. The best seat in the house, that's 20, so to speak. Best seat in the house. The restless man, the path of wildness, the great life adventure. The risk of avoiding risk. Sin and damnation, complete oblivion. I feel like I've gone astray. Complete oblivion. The season of philosophy. Script writing, the bullseye aim, the uphill climb, arena and utility, 
Nothing is enough. The principle of fun. Damn it. Being ready. 34. I definitely missed something. Hmm. Thought I had it all down. Oh well. The bullseye aim, right? The bullseye aim suggests that uh, shoot for the mark, but expect to not quite. Expect to rarely hit the mark. Hmm. Okay, let's do uh, prepare for today. It's a Thursday, Wednesday. Uh, busy day today. Got a lot of things to do for my new project, my my old lingering project. I have to prepare. We have a big day tomorrow. We have a project closure meeting. Got to ready myself for that. And I'm the MC. La 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 la. I get up. Like, hey, welcome everybody. It's not a roast. Um, but I'm, all, I'm I'm ready. I'm I'm ready for that. I can do that. No problem. Um. It's the other stuff. It's 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 managing this new project of mine in an effective manner, which I can do too. Just matter matter managing expectations when, and laying down the risks and then adjusting accordingly, which is exactly what I've done already. Mm. I laid down ten risks. We've already managed six of them. For like four or five, we accepted the risk, which means that they weren't fixed, they were just accepted, which just sets the stage for the expectation of lackluster results in the end, right? And it's, I mean, the sponsor has the option to do otherwise, you know. Anyway, I'm getting, going off on a thing. And then I'll, uh, I'll I, will, I will work hard today. Steady, steady, steady. I will climb that mountain early in the, in the morning, twice, no less. And I'll be ready for the day. And I will push forward. I'm going to set the stage and set the cadence for this new project. I'll have two 20-minute breaks, and I will uh, work on. I'm updating the uh, uh, video descriptions in the in the you know, in my YouTube channel during my breaks, and um, getting my channel ready for Japan, getting me ready for Japan to become Softy Papa again in earnest, tempered with the uh, experience of going alone. Can't wait to be that guy again. But I'm practicing. I'm not waiting. I'm 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 already becoming that guy again now. He's he's still there. Sands the hat. Sands all the other stuff. Nah, new man. Okay. Um. That's it. Am I ready for death? My affairs are in order. My relationships are sound. And my life's work is done. I'm ready. I. Th think I'm prepared to get swept off the beach or swept off my rock by a big old wave and dr and be pulled down under without looking back, not even turning to see my loved ones one last time. Doesn't mean I don't care about them. It just means that I'm ready to go. Hmm. Not that I want to go, but I'm ready to go. Being always ready to die. We'll see how that holds up when that time comes, right, Kurt? I'll have poetry on my mind. I'll keep I'll keep some good books of poetry close at hand if I have if I have uh, to wait out the clock to death to read and keep my mind well focused on beautiful things. And let's stop there. I wish you all the best. Be safe, but not too safe. Take care.